Yeah! What up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Oh, look at all the snow we got. Finally, finally. Freddy, you ready to go play in the snow? Huh, buddy? The kids and the wife are out front playing on the sleds, and I'm about to surprise them. I'm gonna fire up the side-by-side, -side, and they are not gonna know what to do with themselves. Here in Kansas, we don't get much snow. This is our best snow all year. The only other things we've got is just ice on ice and more ice. Today's video is gonna be a lot different. So before we get into it, if you guys wanna help support the channel and help me bring you guys more videos, all you gotta do, go down in the description, hit the Ducks Waterfowl link and see if there's something over there that you like. Whenever you pick something up, like I said, it goes directly to helping me bring you guys more of these videos. And I appreciate it a lot. But we got some new action going on in the pigeon loft. We'll look at that in one second. <laughs> the kids are gonna be seriously so excited. They're not gonna know what to do. Let's go, Fred. Come on, Fred. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> Watch them. They're gonna come running. Look at this, though. We're about to have some fun, boys. <laughs> I've been waiting for a decent snow that I can get out the old side by side. Let's go, Freddy, let's go, Freddy! <laughs> What's up? Hi. What up, dude? Oh, you want in here, huh? Yeah. Okay, dude. Well, that's what we got going on. I don't know if this is gonna work here. We got a ratchet strap attached to a piece to the string. You guys ready? You ready, Bodie? Yeah! Yeah! Well, it is the next day y'all and it is extremely cold out. It's sitting at 15 degrees. The real fill right now is negative three still and it's 1.30 in the afternoon. I was gonna go and uh, I was gonna go do a little solo hunt this morning, a little solo goose hunt. Uh, but this morning the real fill outside was like negative 15. So good thing I didn't go because the geese didn't even fly this morning because it was so darn cold. But real quick, we're gonna go check the pigeon traps and I've been thinking to myself, I've been thinking and thinking, Bobby, where is this video headed? What are you gonna do next in this video? And my original plan was we were just gonna float it into a hunt, but with the weather, nah. So what I've been wanting to do for a long time and a lot of you have asked about it is like, where does Bobby come from? What's my story? Uh, what's my reasoning for doing this? What created Bobby? You know what I'm saying? Just like, where does Bobby come from? What's his story? You know what I mean? Because I've had a lot and a lot of people ask Bobby, like, what, did you go to a private school? Like, what's your story? Where did you come from? You know what I mean? So I'm gonna actually take you to my school, my elementary school where I grew up and give you the lowdown on uh, how I was brought up, how I was raised, when hunting was ever even thought of you know it, the first time i ever hunted why i hunted who i hunted with it's a it's a pretty good story Whew, i'm always out of breath because i have to climb as a lot of you know them bad boys right there they don't look very bad on this camera Whew, but they're steep do we have anything Ooh, we got a lot of ice and snow up here on the rooftop I don't think we have any pigeons. Ooh, it's like all ice up here. Yikes. None in that one. Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> it's so cold. Doesn't look like it. Nope. And pigeons. It's just too cold to even eat, probably. They're probably hunkered in a hole somewhere. Because I, I don't see any flying. I bet you there's nothing flying today. It's so cold. So before we get to my old school here and I just start rambling and talking and talking and talking, I have to warn you guys, the choke that y'all recommended me to get for the three and a half inch Rite shotgun I got, 
I already did one hunt with it. You guys haven't seen it yet. I can't spill the beans and say what choke it is, but just know, thank you, thank you, thank you to all you guys for recommending this particular choke that I got. Woo, it did work. It did work. So like I said, just be expecting that video. It is an absolute banger. So first off, before we get to talking about this right here, cause this is the important thing today. Oh yeah, this right here, that's my school. A lot of you guys know my story of how I got into hunting. I've told it a couple times, uh, but we'll go through it real quick before we get into that. I went on my first quail and pheasant hunt when I was probably nine years old. I got my hunter safety certificate when I was eight. Now, during that time, I only went on a handful of hunts. So I didn't hunt very much from the age of eight to 12. And then hunting really just turned off for me. I got into skateboarding because of where I come from. I got into skateboarding and that's where I found my artistic side. Uh, the language I speak, the way Bobby is, a lot of it comes from skateboarding. I fell in love with skateboarding and when I did, hunting, guns, everything else went to the wayside. I skateboarded for a lot of years and then I met my buddy Wade and we found hunting all over again together. We we're the same age, same grade. So when we were juniors or sophomores, I believe, that's when we actually picked up the shotguns and we both, me and him, alone together went on our first public duck hunt and uh, we fell in love with it. Both of us were just like, oh goodness, that's it. Let's drain, <laughs> let's drain the bank accounts now. And then after that, it just hasn't stopped. So I started duck hunting when I was probably 15, 16 years old and have not quit ever since. But I come from Hutchinson, Kansas. It's a small town, it's right at like 40K population smack dab middle central kansas and my first school k through six was an elementary school called winans and believe you me it was in the lower part of town if you know what i mean it's right here this school right here this is where it all started this is where bobby played there used to actually be a huge playground over here but it's gone but basketball court here this used to be a basketball court but this school actually shut down like three years. I must have been in ninth grade when it shut down due to structural uh, integrity, I believe. But about my school, about where I come from, this school here, this school was filled with a bunch of kids that didn't have any more opportunity than the ones sitting beside them. You know what I mean? All of us kids that went to this school poor we didn't have money you know what i mean some of us were barely middle class but for the most part all of our families all of our households we didn't have a lot of money and let me tell you every walk of life went here i got cultured at this school i grew up with everybody with anybody it didn't matter how much money you had it didn't matter if your parents were divorced it didn't matter if you had sisters or brothers or if you're like me an only child this was the school of hard knocks. Let me tell you what, this school built me from the ground up. There were some tough kids that went here and uh, I learned one thing. I was the little white boy, you know what I mean? I Quickly I learned, Bob, you are the little white boy. You better make sure you get along and make friends with everybody. So that's what I learned real quick was, man, it's a lot better to make friends with everybody, to be generous, to be kind to everybody, have everybody on your side to be against everybody or, or to have everybody against you. You know what I'm talking about. Again, I was just a little white boy and let me tell you what, I'm 6'1 now, but back then I was always tiny. I was the little guy. Now let me tell you what, Bobby got bullied here. Bobby got bullied, Bobby got punished at this school, but that's what made me me. Um, I can remember right there, right, See those doors right there? There's always a line. There was always a line of kids right there. Right after recess, we'd have to get in a single file line and I can remember one time in particular in that spot right there, uh, there was this bully, I mean bully. He was like two or three years older than me. He was a sixth grader at the time. His name was Jonathan. 
and I can remember he came up behind me and just kicked my legs right out from under me. Slapped the back of my head on the concrete. I mean, completely just took me out. All the kids were laughing. And uh, if you've ever had something like that done to you at whatever age, at any age, uh, it never goes away. And um, I seen that guy probably a year or two ago and um, I don't think he even recognized me, but I sure recognized him. And um, let me tell you, what comes around goes around. Because if you're a bully, let me tell you what, what come, just put it this way, what comes around goes around. But what I'm getting at all in all, I wanted to show you guys where I come from. I want to give you my story because I did not come from money. I did not come from opportunity. Uh, I have great parents. All four parents of mine are magnificent parents, but we didn't have a lot of money, you know what I mean? You can do anything, guys. It doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. You can make your life what you want it to be. I barely went to college, and I'm not proud of that. I really wish I would have went and got a degree, but college just wasn't for me. I was not a college guy. I always wanted to get out there. I knew enough people, and I always told myself, one day I'm going to come across something that I like, that I enjoy, that will take me somewhere, that I will pursue, that I will love, and I will build it into mine, Bobby's. You know what I mean? I know I'm everywhere right now with the school and, and everything, but I hope you guys are kind of getting what I'm saying. Y'all have asked, Bobby, where are you from? What's your story? Well, this is it. Uh, it's nothing special. It's probably not much different from a lot of your guys' story. So all in all, what I'm getting at, guys, is I always had dreams, and I chased them. When I seen something, I went for it. When I was younger, I job jumped a lot, which isn't a good thing all the time. But I job jumped a lot getting better money. I would leave one job for a $2 pay raise here. You know what I'm saying? I was always after opportunity because where I came from, there was none. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there was none. This town where I'm from, I love my town. I love Hutch, but there's just not much here for a lot of people. That's why I'm saying it doesn't matter where you come from. You can make your life what you want out of it. You, you can get what you want out of it, put it in, be nice to people, don't be the bully, and good things will come back around. I know, I'm out here preaching positivity, I know, but that's the name of the game here on the channel. I am appreciative of what I've built. I appreciate you guys being here every single video. In this video, I just wanted to give love to y'all and uh, tell you thanks, because back in the day, I knew I wanted to go places. But now that I'm actually here, looking back, it's pretty crazy. I will tell you what, life, life is crazy, y'all. Take in every day, remember everything that you can, be kind, be kind. My wife uh, put something on her Instagram story the other day that said, happiness is a lifestyle. You know what I mean? Happiness is a decision. Sometimes, just like today, I didn't wake up very happy, but you know what? I found happiness in my day. I turned my frown upside down, and here we are, I'm feeling great. So just remember, we're all humans. A lot of our stories are the same. Just chase, chase. We only get one opportunity. Chase your goals, you'll get it, I promise. Well, I've been driving around all afternoon finding snow geese. Snow geese conservation fires up Monday here, and uh, on top of that, I wanted to tell you guys for one, I am starting a guide service. I am building a lodge this summer. I want to give you guys a heads up. Be expecting some lodge building videos. And stay tuned because we will be opening the books and booking clients. I will let you know when the books open and when that process starts. It's a big deal to me. Very, very big deal. Taking it extremely serious. And I really hope that you guys are just even half as excited as I am. It's always been a dream to have a guide service and we're finally doing it. And uh, we'll keep talking about the guide service here in one second, but I wanna let you guys know, oh, there's a lot of you guys that have been wanting to send me stuff. I finally opened a PO box. Uh, it will be PO box number 2901, uh, Hutchinson, Kansas 67504. 
that is where you send everything. I will link the P.O. box down in the description below. I'll type it in down there so you guys will know the number. You can go down there, yada, yada, yada. But I did tell you we were gonna check out the pigeon loft. Let's go do that real quick. But yes, uh, the big announcement is that I in fact am opening an outfitter, a guide service, building a lodge. We are moving. I've been telling you guys that we'll be moving. Well, well, we are under a month now away from our move date and our new house that we're buying. That is actually where the lodge is. The lodge is behind the house. So I'll have everything at one place. It'll be really, really nice. And we'll have area. We will have area to play. Back here at my house, we don't have no area to play. The only area we got is for the pigeons. And this is what I was gonna show y'all right here. Check it out. We've got some eggs a brewing. Oh yeah. The pigeon loft will go as well. Plus with the extra room that we're gonna have at the new place, I think I'm gonna get homing pigeons. Ones that we can actually take out 20, 25, 30 miles and try to race them back to the loft. That'll be really cool. So there's a lot of cool content coming this summer, y'all. But the lodge, I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous, but extremely excited. There is a ton of work to do. A lot of interior building. So there's gonna be a lot of lodge updates. There's gonna be a lot of videos on that stuff. If you guys are interested in that, let me know down below. And I need your guys' help, please. I need help with a name, naming my guide service, naming the lodge, you know what I mean? And I need a legit name, a good name, something that just rolls right off the tongue, you know what I mean? I need your guys' help. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what the best names that you guys can come up with. If I choose your name for that guide service, which would be absolutely epic, I will send you guys some ducks gear. I'll send you a hat and hoodie for sure. So please help me out. I appreciate it. But, uh, whole Frederick, he's gonna be busy next year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's gonna be busy retrieving all them ducks and geese. We will be guiding ducks and geese here in central Kansas, y'all. We will be based out of my hometown right here where you've seen all these videos. That's where we're gonna be guiding. So again, stay tuned for when I open them books and I start accepting clients. I will let you guys know first and foremost, and if you guys really wanna keep up to date on that situation, follow me on Instagram, because I'll be announcing it there when the books open as well. <sighs> but again, <sighs> nervous and excited at the same time. We're gonna kill it, I know we will. But thank you all for being here. Subscribe if you haven't, hit that little notification bell down there, because it'll notify you when your boy uploads. But until next time, place, place, <laughs> That's a good boy. That's a good boy, Frederick. Sit. I've been getting laid back, baby. You should know that I don't need your criticism, pessimism.